Hey everybody and welcome to the One Wildlife Podcast with me, Abby Barnes. This is simply a show about life and as such there are no boundaries to where our conversations can take us. Along the way we simply aim to inspire, empower, educate and uplift, exploring how we can all live our best lives every single day. Before we get started, I want to mention that this podcast is hosted by Spend More Time in the Wild, which I founded in 2016 to help individuals get outside for the benefit of mental and physical health. Over the last few years, the project has grown into a worldwide community of passionate and courageous individuals working together to enjoy the beauty of our wild spaces and protect them for generations to come. You can find out more about both the podcast and wild by visiting www.spendmoretimeinthewild.co.uk. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening or head on to YouTube to watch the full episode. Maxine and Tom met in 2009 during their second year at Winchester University and five years later they set off to travel around the world. They started in South and Central America before heading east, spending a year working in Australia and visiting New Zealand, Asia and Nepal along the way. In 2017, they walked the entire 2,189 mile Appalachian Trail, which proved to be a life-changing experience that set them on the path to forging their inspirational online space called It Takes a Journey. Their mission is to live a simpler way of life that focuses on health and happiness and to document their journey. Along the way, they have been courageously raising the profile of limb difference and limb loss, highlighting that difference doesn't necessarily mean disability, and of mental health and the healing power of time spent outside in nature. They are currently in the throes of converting a van, which will soon become their full-time home with their dog, Finn. Maxine and Tom, welcome to the podcast. Hello! Hello, Abby. How's it going? <laughs> It is going very good. I'm so pumped to, to be here having this conversation with you. And as we've just uh, chatted about before we've gone live, it is a glorious sunny day. So what better day to be hanging out with two awesome people like you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah, no, Days are always better when the sun's out. Always, always. And nice, nice to be chatting with you as well. Ah, uh, thank you. So listen, I want to jump right in and I want to ask you both sort of individually and also collectively what does the outdoors mean to you? Um, Max, would you like to kick us off? Yeah. Um, so I, I've just always been an outdoorsy person. I was a bit of a, I guess, it's probably an old phrase now, but tomboy, you know, growing up, always just playing outside. And so it's always kind of been a part of life. Um, and then, yeah, like meeting Tom, we kind of had normal, normal kind of, you know, day jobs and went, you know, met at uni and, I guess didn't spend too much time like doing hiking and stuff and then suddenly mm. we kind of went traveling and, and it all kind of changed um, and we, we started to kind of I guess see the importance of being outside in nature and I guess the effect of it and and that actually we were our, hap our happiest um when we were outside so mm. yeah mm. so we just always loved it and growing up always went to you know um to the beach like I lived really close to the sea in Bournemouth so oh, nice. um, kind of after after sixth form and, and things I'd always go walking at the beach so it's just always been Hengisbury Head used to be your Hengis spot yeah Hengisbury yeah. Head is the favorite oh, um, good and I, felt like, I think it's because I felt like I was transported away to somewhere else like it always felt like I was walking from Christchurch into like California when you can come around the corner and there was like a sunset <laughs> and the beach and you were like wow this is awesome so I think for me yeah nature's always kind of transported me to felt like a, an escape so, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, a sense of freedom and just um, I guess it's always a place that we go on our free time and I guess it's our hobby, as it were. It's just yeah. a nice place, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. And it's so diverse like as you say one minute you can round a corner on the coast and feel like you're in california or the caribbean especially <laughs> on a glorious day like today that we've got here in england um but even you know being up on the moors or um just all the different diverse landscapes they bring mm. a different sense of freedom and adventure um i guess you guys probably feel the same then <laughs> yeah totally and yeah. even you say it's like diverse we've obviously during lockdown lots of local walks but they even a 20 minute 20 minutes in a different direction changes how the landscape looks. Not obviously by country, but quite a lot. Cause you're like, we didn't think it looked like this around here. What is going yeah. on here? Yeah. It's quite, it's quite fun like that. There's even the small details change. Like 
I know it's, it sounds silly, but even on one of our last walks, like one of the, you know, the ways they, the way they do the, the fences around fields, it looked different. So it felt like we were in a different place. And I know that's like such a small detail, but and like just saying, noticing different trees. And we love a bit suddenly... of fence chat. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> gate to go through or like yeah it's like so funny it's like yeah, yeah. oh a new kind I of gate. these kind of skies <laughs> that's it it's it's, it's, it's you know it's yorkshire isn't it as well with the dry stone walls and you think oh my gosh like how old is this wall you know mm. some of them are thousands of years old and the the boundaries that we walk past you know even trees and hedgerows you sometimes you take a closer look and there you know there's foundations of old stone walls there and and what sort of history and archaeology are we walking through just because it looks like this now doesn't mean it it always did so um yeah it's it's very insightful isn't it and and did you both sort of grow up walking or were there any other sports in the mix there uh, I don't remember doing loads. I remember mum always taking us out on walks and being like, oh, come on, <laughs> we did this last weekend. <laughs> um, no, we were always outside. And we were, I just remember one thing, which was me and Harry used to just climb on hay bales a lot because there used to be a lot of um, cornfields, I think. They think they were cornfields, I don't know. There was just big hay bales and they were fun <laughs> to climb on. Yeah. So, yeah, we lived, we, I guess we lived in the countryside, let's say. So there was, there was always bits to go and do. Mm. but not not remembering being a fan of walking at the time <laughs> where did you grow up tom uh odium hampshire okay nice and then we've moved to where we are now which is alton hampshire which is 10 miles down the road oh. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> well you did travel the world in between so you can uh, <laughs> let go of that yeah, concern <laughs> Ah. I did remove it here actually though because I because I grew up by the sea and like the new forest and things so I had, was really lucky being in the middle of kind of like having forest and sea and, and everything mm. but moving here I guess I didn't fully appreciate the, the countryside around until we were here after traveling mm. I realized wow we really are in a great spot we can go mm. off to you know in any in direction so we do feel lucky to yeah be here. yeah sure. this the sea has a special a special feeling to it doesn't it i mean there is that classic question are you coastal people or mountain people <laughs> oh I, it's so difficult because we like, ex- i love the extreme as in the mountains are great and also there's a love of surfing and kiteboarding so the sea's also good and in between is still great but definitely up a mountain or in the sea is probably my two of my favorite <laughs> places but the other bits in between are still really good that's it. You can walk the bit in between and then you get the benefit of everything. Oh, man, flip the question. I think probably for me, mountains, um, just something about them really brings out the best in me. I actually have a bit of a fear of water, um, which last year I overcame and I got myself snorkeling in the south of Italy. Um, it's a film project currently in edit. But uh, it's funny because I did grow up um, about five six miles from the coast so you know again every weekend we'd be sat sat on the beach or i'd be building sand castles or i don't know um sea combing i mean my endless fancy connection of fossils and uh shells and and things that i've picked up just that I mean, it's not gotten any smaller let's be completely honest about this um you know and i sit in the waves and it's funny how it's just transitioned as i've become an adult and now it's just like yeah give me the mountains but um i remember on the Mm -hmm. bearer way in 2019 so it's a trail in ireland it was the first time i sort of experienced mountains meeting the sea and i was like well this is the best of both worlds i'll take this (laughs) yeah definitely yeah that's cool isn't it i think there's a time and a place almost for for, like yeah it's just nice to be able to change to change i know that when we went to i would have said sea once once upon a time Mm. but then when we went to like Wales, <clears throat> excuse me, the first time I went to Wales and I was like, what? Like there are mountains like this? Like, you know, you know, being like kind of in my early twenties and hadn't really explored that much and thought, this is incredible, but this isn't that far from home. And then just kind of opening our eyes to, to, to yeah, possibilities. But then, yeah, there's so many good. beautiful spots in the UK. I'm so looking forward to like, yeah, staying a bit closer to home and <laughs> exploring them. I think that's it, isn't it? And we, um, for for the listeners, we're still currently recording this during lockdown in England. But by the time this goes up, we will be hopefully somewhat freer. And uh, yeah, it's it is exciting. Exactly, it is very exciting because the seasons are changing. We're moving into spring. You know, the daffodils, crocuses, snowdrops, wild garlic, the buds on the leaves. Everything's coming out, the and, um, and the days are getting longer. Exactly. And and are you feeling that anticipation as well? I can imagine. 
Oh, so much right now from the news last week and just any, I mean, even now it's been like kind of a cold, dark ish period for the last six weeks mm. altogether. And now, for like the next 10 days, the weather says sunshine, which just is awesome. And it's just a little bit warmer. So it's, yeah. Yes. It's, Actually, last week, I, it was the coldest I've ever been in like, the UK. We went for a walk and we're like, let's sit and have our lunch on this bench. And I, I mean, we love our food, but oh. I was like, just eat it and run. Like, <laughs> I could not feel my fingers. I, was like, I have not got that many fingers to like lose yeah. these, like to frostbite in the UK. Yeah, like, I was just having a good was, time. It was, it was you really, could see it in the face. It was just like, like we need, I'm too cold to enjoy, enjoy this. This. <laughs> this. This needs to be over really quickly. <laughs> Like we've been to every space camp, and I swear it wasn't this cold. It was oh, a really spot in front of a pond, but for some reason, well, we we chose it because it was pretty, but we we didn't consider the wind. The cold wind was just in our face. <laughs> we didn't choose this sheltered spot, and uh, yeah, it was a mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake for sure. Yeah, the wind makes a massive difference, actually. Um, but it's it's something I'd like to sort of move into now. Is at times it can feel like we're being blown by a cold wind. <laughs> just in life. And um, Max, I'd like to start with you because I know, well, first of all, for, for both of you, you, you've got It Takes a Journey and we'll get into that a bit later in the conversation. Um, you know, and you're trying to raise the profile of obviously being outside, mental health and of limb loss and dif limb difference. So I'd like to sort of go back to the early days. And Max, um, I'd love if you could tell us and sort of paint a picture for the listeners about your... I don't know, situation for lack of a better phrase, um, with your left arm. I mean, I'm trying not to give things away because I want you to tell the story um, yes. about what it was gr like growing up, um, being born with um, essentially not a complete left arm um, and sort of what that was like for you on the physical side of things and then on the mental side of things. And then Tom, we'll move into when you came into the picture a little bit later and sort of go on from there. So Max, if you kick us mm. off, that'd be awesome. Changed her life forever. Yeah. <laughs> I let him believe that. No, um, yeah, so I was born with um, a limb difference. Um, it's, they called it an ischemic contracture, um, which I still don't really know what it means. <laughs> but um, as, effectively, I think um, it was uh, the umbilical cord got, got wrapped around and um, there were no, you know, it wasn't in scans or anything. And, and so it was a bit of a surprise. I was a month early. And um, yeah, it was pretty tragic. Like, you know, my mum, we both almost died. Like, it was pretty dramatic. But then mm. growing up, like, my parents are just always kind of, you can do anything. They weren't, I mean, I think they must have been phased, you know, at the start. But I think um, it's always just, I never really had that many adaptions or anything. Um, I, we, I was born in South Africa and we came to the UK when I was four. Um, but I think there was never, there were lots of trips to, like, doctors and to, like, surgeons and things. Um, just to kind of look at possibilities and things but because of the way my arm is it makes it a bit difficult for kind of adaptions because mm. it's kind of not a full arm but is a full arm so it's it, where I haven't got an elbow um yeah I've just learned to use it as it is basically so yeah no it never it's never really helped me back um physically it's never really helped me back mentally now when I look back I know that it did because I was really shy um but I kind of didn't, I wasn't too distressed. Like I had lots of friends, like in my kind of friends group at school, like I wasn't shy and um, I never, I was never bullied. Like I was really lucky. You know, there might have been one time where I was, when I think a boy at school was like, what's wrong with your hand? And I was like, uh, what's wrong with your face? And that was kind of the end of it. Like, <clears throat> basically. so um, yeah, I was really lucky in that way. Um, but I think I was actually having a chat with a, with a reach mum, um, recently um which is the charity that, that I, we actually work for and she um she was saying that I think if you're confident in yourself then it makes it harder for people to kind of pick, pick on you um mm. so I had lots of friends and yeah physically I was always really into sports like my favorite was PE and just what I hated math and science and like I was yeah English and PE was like was like my thing um and yeah played netball um played like as many of those kind of sports as possible um football like it yeah it never stopped me um and then I think uni uni was hard because I got quite I got I suffered from anxiety in my first year um which I'd never faced before um and I kind of half put it down to my arm and I think just well it's hard enough anyway going to uni yeah, but at yeah. the time you kind of can't segment that you, you just feel like you feel 
So um, I spoke to a surgeon about possibly having my arm amputated because I guess I had this belief because it looks different and I've got a lot of scarring um, that maybe if it was amputated, it would be easier for other people to accept. I'd be able to just say, yeah, I've lost my arm. Like, you know, that was kind of how what I was playing around with in my head. Mm. Um, but then kind of, yeah, time went by. I, I, I did take some medications and beta blockers just to kind of calm my anxiety down just for a short period. And it really helped, actually. It really helped me to see that what was going on was only inside, like, and that I could control it. Um, and yeah, that really helped. And then in year two, um, I met this guy and it kind of like, I guess my anxiety, everything kind of took a back step because I think yeah. my confidence must have grown. And um, yeah, it was, it was, it's all good. And then from there, it was just, you know, traveling and yeah. So, uh, and you know, and it's actually only since last year when I rejoined Reach, the charity as a member, um, realized that actually for this whole time I felt like I was on my own a little bit like I'd always just got on with stuff mm. I never had that person in front of me with a limb difference that I could look at to go oh, okay cool it's fine like there's someone else doing that yeah. and actually being back in reach and seeing people like Claire Cashmore and like Melissa Johns on, on you know on TV watching BBC and watching her on it was like oh cool like it's people that are the same age as me um and so I think it's really important to have that representation and have for people mm. in front of you that you can like look to and go okay cool I'm not on my own there is a community so yeah yeah so that's the well, la, 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 oh, la, la, la. well thank you for sharing <laughs> that you know and I think it's one thing I really pick up from that you know is the power of that loving environment you know as a, as a child growing up with your family just treating you as you which is rightfully so you know and and at school almost because you'd been loved unconditionally which is how it should be you know you sort of could hold your head up high and and that just makes you in the bluntest possible way less of a target you know and, and I can say from my own personal experience you know I went to five different schools because I, I struggled a lot with bullying and I didn't hold my head up high you know I tried to reduce myself to nothing I wanted to disappear and um it also shows sort of your resilience that I I would say is is probably very inherent and inbuilt within you, which I think is a, an amazing attribute to have. Um, what did you study at university? I started out doing half journalism and half English, but slowly realised that I was enjoying the journalism side more. It was just a bit mm. kind of found it a bit more kind of I guess just okay. bit bit proactive a bit more proactive I guess sure. yes and I, I, I wasn't I, weirdly I've always enjoyed English but I've always been a really slow reader so I couldn't kind of I, it was stressing me out a little bit so yeah I ended up doing full, full journalism so. yeah that's cool and Max actually before um, sorry Tom before we come on to you um, Max I, I read or heard somewhere that at one point you joined in a, a Paralympic tryout is that true yeah 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 so at uni I it was like, I think, yeah, first year of uni, um, I saw that there were like Paralympic tryouts for swimming. Um, so we went up to Sheffield um, with my parents and we went and just did like where you can try. It's amazing. You can try all these different sports. Um, I tried wheelchair basketball, which wow. which I thought was maybe cheating, but apparently you, I could have done it. But um, it's <laughs> way harder than you'd think like to shoot, <laughs> shoot from sitting down. Like art oh, is so impressive. Um, but anyway, I tried all that um, swimming. It, you know I hadn't really been swimming so I'd done a bit of training before so I wasn't really cut out for it but then we tried shooting because I, I was like okay fine I'll try it and actually I was all right at it so weirdly I started doing shooting so rifle and um hand pistol like hand pistol um and yeah I really enjoyed it but I think it was just the wrong time in my life like mm. and I think I enjoyed it but it wasn't you know you see these athletes um coming up and they are it's their life and they literally want to dedicate everything to it and I kind of knew in my heart that that if I wanted it that badly I would have pursued it um, and I think because everyone else at the club um because it was up in Aylesbury so I was having to travel up and down and I kind of taken away from uni and it just felt split and I didn't know what I wanted to do and I if I pursued it I would kind of lose lose that lose that part of my life so and I think if I wanted it really badly I think I kept imagine, imagining like if I was interviewed about shooting at like if I managed to get to the Paralympics like if I was interviewed like what would I say and I'd be like yeah I kind of like it yeah I enjoy it you know it's not <laughs> you want that passion right to drive yeah. you and I think I didn't have that maybe it would have come but there wasn't really anyone my age 
um, I did win a medal at the Nationals. <laughs> but um, there was, second. Yeah, I came second. But um, there wasn't that many people like my age. So I think I felt like there was something missing. So it was okay. a wonderful experience. The people were absolutely amazing. But um, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I went, went a different way. But it, yeah, okay. that would have been a different life. <laughs> I don't That's think it. you would have met necessarily or who knows what would have happened. But. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing where life, <laughs> the little tangents that life takes us on, isn't it? <laughs> So Tom, what were you studying at university? I was studying design for digital media, which was sort of interactive digital design websites and sort of potentially sort of museum features, I guess. Um, and that was really good fun. Um, yeah, it was, it was sort of a meeting of being creative and also, I guess, sort of a structured mind and enjoying layout and user experience and those kind of things. Um, it was good fun at the time and I thought it was something that would, that, well, in terms of getting a job, it's good for getting a job, but in terms of true outright passions, maybe not, not quite so, not quite so, but only discovering that later on afterwards, like 10 years later on. <laughs> stepping stone. A stepping stone. <laughs> and, and we still use, like, in terms of using those skills now, I use them on a daily basis, but um, in terms of like some other things, maybe not quite so loving towards it. <laughs> sure, sure. Would you be up for talking us through just very briefly how you guys met at university? Yeah, so that's that's quite good fun because me and my best mate, uh, Richard Taylor, who uh, we grew up together, or well, we met at college, I guess, and we ended up going to uni together. We And we went to Winchester, which is... Um, it's not very far away, it's like minute. 20 minutes down the road, but we, we lived there rather than staying at home. And um, Rich was doing full journalism to begin with. And I don't know how you met Rich, but anyway. Oh, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Rich introduced us through one of your uni projects and said, oh, you, I know a guy who can do the design or for, I can't remember what you were doing. I think we need we had like a live broadcast studio um at, uni, at, oh, at Winchester yeah. which is amazing and yeah. I think um you were in the room next door like a tiny little box room whether because I think there were only like six of you or something doing mm -hmm. it um and Rich like said like oh we need someone to help on our you know our broadcast so like we'll get my mate like Tom in so I think that's how we kind of met and then there was another project that he was like oh you guys should go and talk to Tom next door and <laughs> then like we didn't know it was like this whole plan that we had. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was kind of really just great. went from there, really. So. Well, they did pretty yeah. good then, didn't they? That was at the beginning, uh, beginning of second year, I think. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a great little story. <laughs> and then he later revealed that it was like this plan that he concocted. To so <laughs> funny. Up, he just had to yeah. give it a bit of time first before he owned up to that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was really protective, though. He was like... You're not going to mess my friend around, are you? Ah, that's so cool. So you finished university, and then in 2014, you travel the world. I mean, so easy to say, long time to do, massive adventures. You do Machu Picchu, you dived with sharks, you did Everest Base Camp. Could you sort of run us through? Let's start first up with the highs. Why did you want to travel the world, and what were some of the the highlights for you of that experience? Well, it wasn't the plan, was it? Really? No, it was, it was a fairly loose plan. We originally planned to pretty much go for sort of up to six months. Hmm. Um, also, because that's probably what our, basically our budget could allow for. Um, the highs, the question, the highs, right? Yeah. yeah. Highs were <laughs> yeah. those things that you just mentioned, probably the, oh, the best thing, probably base camp, because it was just not not necessarily actually getting to base camp but the whole just the experience of going to base camp and being in Nepal mm. just because Nepal is awesome because of its people and its landscape as well um and we had read so many but you know the books that were talking about kind of Everest and things and so to actually be there and to see the like I guess it was a really moving time to be able to see like the memorials of the people that had been there and had, had you know died doing what they love and um it was just a really surreal experience mm. um so. yeah we got quite into it in terms of reading the books and learning about it and maybe 
maybe once we were there and we learned more about it as to the culture of actually climbing Everest, maybe it's a bit, <laughs> a bit gung ho in some ways. Um, but then I'm just, other highlights were we met sort of when New Zealand was awesome in terms of just the, again, the whole country was really beautiful. Uh, we had a surprisingly long stay there because <laughs> I forgot to update my passport, so I had less than oh. six months. So in terms of traveling on, it was going to be a problem. We planned to spend like three weeks there. Um, <laughs> so we had to send the passport away back to England and just stay in New Zealand until it came like back. six weeks. <laughs> um, and also I forgot to update my driving license. It was a driving, it was a driving holiday. holiday for six weeks. Oh, <laughs> so wow. Max, I think. Um, but that was really awesome. We met a long lost relative who is um, my granddad's illegitimate sister, as we found out. Illegitimate? Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's only because of how history plays itself. And, and she's just granddad's sister nowadays. Um, but we'd never really heard of her until they were like, oh, yeah, you should be up with uh, Liz. Liz. And then we met with Liz and actually... Nora, her friend, we actually stayed at her friend Nora's house. Um, and yeah, that was just quite an experience because also Nora and Liz are in their 70s or 80s. Yeah, I think there I, is an age gap, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, so they were older and they were actually expecting us to be sort of in our 50s or 60s. So oh, we wow. like, and also we met. Well, Nora, few, we'd have to look after them. They can go off and do their own thing. We met Nora and Liz and, and um, we didn't know which one Liz was. <laughs> <laughs> who, who's our relative out of you two? So yeah. that was just all quite an experience. We ended up staying with Nora and... She lent we, us a tent and yeah, yeah. she facilitated a lot of our adventures in, in New Zealand, which was we awesome. Had, we, we started there at the beginning and then we ended there to return her kit and also to meet her family and have a Sunday roast with everybody, <laughs> which was quite good fun. So yeah. one of those, yeah, so there are those highs that you don't expect and like can't plan for, but you take it out of your comfort zone and and uh, just roll with it I think yeah. <laughs> well that really that leads me very nicely sort of on to the next thing so I think the natural question would be what were the lows but I don't want to focus on that I think it's very easy for traveling the world as a phrase to have a very romanticism kind of notion to it um yes. but I can sh I, I mean I'm absolutely sure that there were times where you felt anxious or you felt afraid or you felt uncertain and I wondered if there were I don't know a couple of situations where perhaps those more challenging emotions came up but then you could tell us sort of what you learned from them because I think often we make mistakes or we find ourselves in some kind of sketchy uncertain situation and we can just see it as a a blunt situation but actually I think um, there's certain types of people that can grow through those experiences and I know that's something that you did certainly with something we'll come on to a little bit but yeah if you've got a couple of examples that were a little bit harder for you and, and how you sort of got through those and came out the other side. Uh, Max would you like to kick us off? Yeah um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is probably visiting places like Cambodia for me personally um, because I really struggled uh, I probably didn't realise until kind of halfway through, I struggled with kind of my arm and um, the whole, the culture kind of around disability there. Um, they, not everyone, obviously, but we were told by kind of a guide that generally the belief is that um, if you're born with a, with a limb difference or you are in an accident or, or something happens to you that you might, you probably sin in another life. So oh, wow. to kind of hear that from, from someone so kind of directly and bluntly and it, it, it just stayed with me and we would we would be kind of walking around and there would be you know um people on you know uh, like begging on the street or, or people with limb differences because of you know you know the wars that be going on and uh, you know they've had limbs you know come off in mines and and terrible terrible things and to think that that they're just kind of shunned in society because they believe that they've done something bad i, I think mm. um when when and also when, when they saw me they were kind of just completely like thrown off kilter like there's a westerner with a with a, with one arm like what like it was it was crazy so um you know in the uk it's you can't just kind of it's not polite to stand and stare at someone but in other countries it's different so and you realize um that you are very cushioned and very comforted here so i guess i learned that we are very lucky and mm -hmm. that um that actually in the big in the you know in the big picture in the world there are other people with limb differences that are struggling more, a lot more than I am, you know, um, and that is just a learning and educational thing. Like they don't know, they don't know different. So you can't, 
kind was, of have to try to separate that theirs their emotion. Was, uh, theirs was part of their belief system, mm -hmm. which was seemed quite cruel. Yeah, but then we but, met, you know, in Nepal, we met another uh, Buddhist man who said, he said something slightly different and he changed mm -hmm. it and he said, actually, I would believe this. So actually, you know, I'm not, not trying to say it's like a whole, whole country, but um, yeah, it's just... Different. I guess we should say we don't know enough. No, we <laughs> don't know enough either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, but it's, it's interesting to hear your, yeah, the compassion. It's interesting to hear your, 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 what you're seeing from the outside in, you know, and if, if it certainly is a belief that's, I don't know, fixed within the culture, I mean, there's generations of that story being told. And so it's mm. going to take a long time for change to filter through. But I have no doubt that you just walking through the, the villages there was, was very impact for those people, um, in fact, impactful for those people and probably helped them feel, just a little bit less alone and maybe you are actually just a walking version of hope for them you never know <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. That's nice. <laughs> yeah that does sound nice yeah uh, so um tom how about you have you got an example um i'm thinking of we were in ecuador quito and we were crossing into colombia and at that part of the world there was lots of rumors of not even rumors there was lots of um Buses getting stopped and, and tourists getting robbed, hopefully just robbed. Um, and it was more, it was more probably a, a mental fear than a reality. Um, only that you meet people on buses and they're like, oh yeah, so-and-so just got robbed last week. Oh, they just mm. took his glasses. Just to, just because, you're like, I need my glasses. Like, no, we're, we're taking glasses. Everything. And we met maybe a, a handful of people throughout sort of that area of the world. Um, and we were trying to plan the crossing because we knew that it was poten potentially one of the more dangerous crossings, um, as in, you've got to get on the bus, get off at the border and get on a taxi and go to the other side, um, which in reality, it was pretty much as easy as that. Um, but it was quite, a, you, it's, it's a lot of unknowns, mm. anticipation, anticipation <laughs> trying to get to the bus station on time, trying to understand which bus is going to the right place, if it's actually leaving uh, on that day or something like that um so there's a lot of anticipation for that but i guess the learning curve was with loads of things that probably happen daily is that the thought of it is probably a lot worse than the reality of it yeah. the reality is never that bad the thought is usually far far more worrying yeah it's a tough one isn't it and i was i was thinking i mean a very simple question although really not um that i sort of wanted to to throw at you was would you say in general your mental health was better or worse during the trip but what i'm sort of gathering from the conversation we've been having so far is as with life there's immense fluctuations because one minute you know you're riding a horse down the grand canyon or whatever and it's amazing or you're diving with sharks or you've just reached machu picchu and it doesn't really get any better than that um and then the others yeah you're stressing about a crossing so um i can imagine it was as exhilarating as tiring at points yeah totally I, I feel like when you're doing like the backpacking thing you're the, the, it doesn't like weigh you down though because you it's like really important for, for living in that moment and you've got to do these things otherwise well you don't exactly know where you're going to end up so um in terms of like the stress it's i feel like it's more deserved rather than some of the stresses mm -hmm. at home is just like worries and it's not like survival stress it's like it? survival like, stress yeah. yeah you've got to be alert and, and uh, yeah you've always got one you've got like one foot in the adventure and one foot on the in, on the <laughs> pedal of like right okay so planning next place like yeah i think everyone thinks it's like a dreamy like oh you just you know float from place to place but yeah you have to plan like you have to yeah. find out where the buses are you have to like be thinking constantly yeah, so, yeah. pretty fun though yeah super fun Absolutely. Well, you mentioned a word there that I'm going to grab hold of and use as a dovetail into the next sort of chapter of our conversation, and that is backpacking. So I think sort of internationally, the phrase backpacking is used for, you know, traveling around the world. Oh, we're going to go backpacking around Europe. But then there's the sort of hiking backpacking, which is what I'm very familiar with. And you guys have done a fair amount of. So in 2017, I think it was you headed out to the States to walk one of the longest trails in the world. I mean, you know, no easy feat. That is the Appalachian Trail. 
why on earth do you want to walk the Appalachian Trail? And I think I'd also like to jump in because I know for a lot of UK listeners, it'll be interesting because it's, it's obviously with the length of it, it's no short task to hike the Appalachian Trail. It's five or six months. How did you go about that logistically? Because that must have been a bit of a drama as well, pulling that off. Uh, yeah, so I guess we got, we got the idea from, from our original travel. So, um, Probably the second half, no, the whole thing. Um, just doing the treks, like the multi-day treks were really fun. Most of them were organized, um, like Machu Picchu, um, the Lost City in Colombia. Can't think of any others. But we used to do lots yeah, of yeah. just sort of base camp for sure. Um, and just lots of day day hikes as well. Um, and when more in New Zealand, because we had such a long time there and we obviously, it's an expensive country compared to Asia, where we, were, we had only planned to spend two weeks in New Zealand because it's more expensive. We ended up spending six weeks, so our budget was like getting munched. Um, just fun, cheap ways to go and see the places. Well, walking. <laughs> it can't but, be much cheaper than walking. I have to say, before before we started actually planning the Appalachian Trail, I remember that we heard about it from um, mm. an American couple yeah. that we met in Vietnam, and they had mentioned it, and I distinctly remember thinking like thinking and saying that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard like that is why would you do that I think I even said why would you do that because it just seemed it seemed completely outrageous that you would want to go and hike that, that long like in one go so and then suddenly we kept talking about it and then Tom mm. started watching YouTube videos on it and that oh, actually, that's the hard like, to go down oh, actually. <laughs> We watched a lot of Redbeard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not that Redbeard. Um, and, then, and then suddenly it was like, we're doing it. Like, that's it. That's yeah. the only thing we could, like, think about. So, I yeah. think we came back. We lived with your mum for a bit on her sofa, got jobs for as basically as short amount of time as possible to, like, save up and go out again. I think we ended up, we were planning for, like, six months to work, and I think it ended up being nine months. Um, we rented a place in Bournemouth Way. Yeah. We didn't have a car. We they tried to save as much money as possible, like like mm. walking everywhere, like to get fit for it. Because you can't. There's not many places you can go and do like. You can only really train for it, and yeah. you can do like. You can be you know, fit, but there's no quite yeah. training for twenty miles a day for six days a week. Yeah. No. You just don't have the time for that, right? So Tom yeah, would exactly. cycle to work that way, and I would like run home like several times a week, and it yeah we just kind of got fit that way, and then logistically you've got to go and um you have to go visa. get a visa yeah. which was terrifying because <laughs> yeah. they asked you loads of questions and we could barely say Katahdin like we didn't even know how to pronounce Mount Katahdin <laughs> we were like they were like so where do you end and we were like um Maine uh what's the mountain you end on and we were like Kahataha <laughs> like, it was pathetic um and um and, and then we said like we start where, where do you start when you're like Georgia we're like Gainesville was like Gainesville in Georgia and they were like yeah there is one in there because apparently there's another Gainesville somewhere else yeah. and he thought we were like tricking him but anyway oh. we got the visa so yeah we quit our jobs and and we did that <laughs> yeah so for listeners in the UK um when it comes to doing you know I mean here in the UK we've got like, 100 200 mile trails um generally speaking you go through villages you can pick up food along the way but when it comes to these longer trails certainly in the states there's actually quite of logistics uh, quite a lot of logistics that needs to go into particular food um you know are you going to carry a certain amount in where are you going to get resupplies um are you going to send them ahead of yourself and i'm just interested sort of how you guys did that um in a brief in a brief summary we didn't really do much plan we well we we knew that along the appalachian trail that there's lots of there's a, there's a, a, quite a lot of towns if you were really determined you could probably make it to town every day you'd have to be hmm. really determined i wouldn't say every day okay but Fairly often, yeah, yeah. but in terms of our logistics of packing ahead and sending food boxes, we basically tried to make it as simple as possible and not do any of that. So we didn't send any bounce boxes. We didn't post ourselves anything. The only things we did actually post ourselves were things that we brought that we actually didn't end up needing. So we had a, we tried to be quite light because you hear quite a lot of stuff about saying, if you're too heavy, you're just not going to make it. There's too much weight in your knees. Mm. Um, just the lighter, the better, the more likely you're going to complete it. So even where we packed as, as light as we could, we sent too much stuff, and we bit, oh, we sent that to a guy that we met uh, quite early on in the trail. 
and then we found out stuff that we just didn't need and he was like well i'm only doing it for a couple of weeks just send it to me and i'll send it back to you when you're done and you're like sweet that's great that's so cool. logistics were just buy food work out we, we did our rations per day so we carried as little as possible all the right we amount. carried like six days worth of food okay um, and then plan to we used a, an app called gut hooks Mm -hmm. which was really good um because we turned up with like the guides and we actually ended up not using them because there's nice white blazers that you can follow on the trees yeah and you don't have to read a map and awesome. yeah so it yeah. makes wow. life a lot well, easier two thousand miles you don't even need a map it's wow. that's amazing it's incredible um so yeah so we just planned our food that way some people do send boxes ahead but because we only have a six month visa i think that's usually for people that live in the states that they have time to kind of plan head like that and send you know food boxes people are dehydrating all sorts of stuff which you could be quite jealous jealous because you have like really great meals couscous or noodles is basically the main yeah. option and cheese <laughs> <laughs> i've got to get the cheese in there now you mentioned on your blog that the appalachian trail was one of the hardest things you've ever done now without sort of stating the obvious why why is that living with max in a uh -oh. tent <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it was I'm a joking. very small space, but no, that was a problem, wasn't no, it? No, that was not Although you, you, I mean, I think you said now. He says now, like, you have to have a bigger tent. We're in um, um, a two man tent, and uh, it's a Z Pax duplex. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. a really great tent, so light, it's amazing. But living in there for five months was it was cozy. Yeah. Like, you couldn't both lie on our backs with our arms down by our sides because our arms were just on each other. <laughs> <But> <laughs> wow. No, but I think the hard things was just being, I think just, we don't do well when we're really tired, both well, at the same time. Yeah. So I think, you know, obviously you're going to be tired. Um, and there were times where I just remember just like having to just cry for a little bit and then just keep going. Like, mm. cause you can't not, you have to keep moving. Like yeah. you can't stop at this place. You can't just stop anywhere cause you need to get water. So it's a really, it was a really nice way in that way that it was like so basic that you need to, gather water like where in life do you need to ration water and food like so it was a really good lesson yeah but again when you're exhausted you can't just go let's just stop here because you're like we need to get to the next bit so why are you eating so much that cheese is for tonight <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I <laughs> um so yeah I, I personally i just remember yeah like walking and having to like um pull yourself up these like rock Mind faces i think some people think it's just like an nice easy trail but like mm. it's like up and down these like kind of slabs of rock and pulling yourself up on the trees and just kind of having a moment of like i'm just so exhausted right now and like yeah it, yeah just being exhausted i think is probably the yeah and the trail uh, was which is obvious i know but i don't was, think people realize it was ridiculous the trail just you'd have to do it to really experience it and it's the white mountain sort of basically at the end um it's not really walking anymore it's it's Climbing. traversing <laughs> it, you don't know, need sort of climbing gear and stuff but it's it can't be much further off that you're gonna need climbing gear if it gets yeah. a little bit steeper so it's it quite of ladders, tough wooden I think, ladders and, I think and our slowest day we did three miles and we were hiking for i think eight hours wow. it was just ridiculous Gosh. but also we were knackered like we yeah. just didn't have we weren't like vibing and really pumped up we were, every every hill we saw we were like Oh, that looks really hard. Let's try it. Oh, it turns out it is actually, yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. It's just relentless, I can imagine. And I, I, I know from personal experience that when you're, you're stripped down to that absolutely exhausted version of yourself, that kind of the only way you can get through, Max, as you said, is to sort of let those emotions out and try and coach yourself through and be your own best friend because otherwise it's going to be a, a jolly tough ride. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the people we met made like all the difference. We, you know, had a little family going, and mm. the people like the trail magic, and like the trail magic, the people were absolutely amazing. So, yeah. we just really loved it from that point of view. Because when are you going to go through those towns? Like, if you go to America, you go to certain places, right? You don't necessarily, you're not going to walk through these, these little towns and meet right. these people. And right. people were so generous, and yeah, it made up for all those like hard times. And you got mm. to town and someone's like hey i want to buy you a coffee and you're like i'm just hiking like i'm just like hiker trash as they call it like why are you, yeah. why are you like, applauding me like other people deserve it more but at that point you're like thank you for the cold can of something because it's boiling <laughs> hot and i'm dying yeah so, yeah it was amazing and they've got a really good culture out there which is part of the trail so all the towns around it know 
about through hikers and they're all offering um hitchhikes which was one of the most fun things about it was hitchhiking i'd be like we get to go to town we get to <laughs> jump into some random's car listen to their life story for like five minutes and get to town like what could be more fun um and but they're just really supportive and yeah the trail magic which is where people just leave presents for the hikers either it's food or sometimes in in the bubble which is when there's lots of people doing it at the same time there's more people so then some people come and offer barbecues and just yeah. massive meals for people and there was there were still people when we were there and there's people that basically live on the trail and just offer trail magic for hikers out of the, the goodness of their heart um, mm. and it probably the first month we couldn't really understand why people were being so generous <laughs> i think it's part of our like english ways in some way or maybe maybe us uh we can't obviously speak for everybody but i feel like in general it is um and yeah it's just and even probably different parts of america it's different but the trail's definitely got its own culture to it which is a really nice culture and listening to other through hikers um it's something that england hasn't quite got also because we don't have the long trails and it's just not it just it doesn't happen because of it mm. but it's, it was really nice at any rate and it's it'll be something nice to share and yeah. experience I have to say, I'm feeling thoroughly inspired right now. So, um, when when are we going? PCT. <laughs> oh, that that's that's up there for me, absolutely. It just do you have any? Um, do yeah. you do you want to do any of the American trails? I would love to do all of them. I mean, to get the whole triple crown status where you do um, for listeners the the Appalachian <laughs> Pacific Crest Trail and the Continental Divide. Like, dude, that'd be so cool. The PCT really appeals oh. because it obviously is so diverse in terms of the almost the climates that you're walking through from the mm. mexican desert and it goes right up to the border with canada um and uh i mean i have so many injuries and issues that i instantly start doubting myself but it is a dream and one i don't want to just keep as a dream um, i did mm. tell myself that i do it once i've got a degree however since i'm no longer doing a degree uh it might take a while so <laughs> but um degree in Exactly. In that case, I'm doing good. Yeah. <laughs> walking, podcasting. Yeah. I'm completely with you on the um, self doubt thing because, like, yeah, you have like a little like niggle or injury, and you're like suddenly like, no, I could never do. It. But I think it's so easy just to look at that whole picture and think, oh, it's too overwhelming. But actually, yeah. I think on the trail they say like, just day by day. You're like, you've exactly. got to just take it day by day. You can't think of the whole thing. So yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. And oh, thank you for the encouragement. And, you know, I like to say the trail is is like life or life is like the trail, you know, and you can't focus on that end point. You just have to, as you say, take it day by day, small steps. Um, enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. Exactly. And right there, because my thought just... Hiker and Parler would like, he just blasts the miles out. Like he is just like, when I hear him, when we were listening to, to him yesterday and it was just like, how does he do? He just is like just chomps miles and it terrifies me because I'm like, I'm like reluct the reluctant explorer, Tom used to call me. So like, it's like, oh no, but what if this happens? And what if you have an injury? And what if, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. we all, we all experience those doubts, don't we? And sometimes it's just having your feet on the ground that's the only thing that can make you believe in yourself. True. Yeah, yeah. Also, I feel like um, on that point is that where as a pair, usually... Um, if somebody's having a panic it can definitely half the time it's me the other person has to stand up and be like don't worry it will be fine and they have no <laughs> obviously no idea they're like it will be fine and you're like okay it'll be fine then. That's it. let's go <laughs> <laughs> just keep showing up hey yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. Awesome. now something you guys touched on is about the sort of trail culture and trail attitudes and i know as i sort of alluded to in the beginning in the introduction piece that hiking the appalachian trail was a pretty game-changing experience for you i mean you've alluded to you know the simpler way of life the time in nature the sort of blunt facing up to the hardships and i wonder how it changed you and how it set you on the path that you're on today so i guess going in it was a chance to do what I think we thought was the most important thing which was well be, being a bit ideally 
idealistic idealistic after i guess watching things like into the wild and you're like all i want to do is burn all of my money and go and <laughs> live in the jungle uh, or alaska or whatever yeah, um, it was like our version of and then actually doing it i thought we would just want to spend every minute in the woods which we did but actually coming into town was so much nicer than i ever would have thought you appreciate everything yeah. just couldn't wait to sleep in a bed running which water makes me like... sad to say i wish that i was like oh yeah i can't i'm just dreaming of my role mat i can't wait to sleep <laughs> i think you've got to be you've got to be honest about those things though because you can't like if, if that's genuinely how you're feeling like yeah like a lot of the time on the trail you're just talking about what you're going to eat in town mm. like that's just like everyone that you meet is like <laughs> what are you dreaming of you know and they're like oh pizza um and but like it's in the moment, you know, like, and actually it's, it's, if that's what you're feeling, happy. that's what you're feeling. I think you have to be kind of realistic. I guess, um, we I did guess. love it though. Like, mm. like when you especially look back, I, I guess, I guess you compare it to like, I don't know, I haven't got a baby, but when you give birth and you forget the pain and you remember the good things, like, sure. it's kind of like that. We're like, you forget all the bad things and you just remember <laughs> the trees blowing and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just remember um, the good things. And the pizza. I guess other things we took away from it were, not just from the Appalachian Trail, but just camping in general, is that uh, we're probably in a really content place where we where we have to do lots of tasks and life is kind of hard because you don't have running water and you don't have a fridge and you don't have a nice comfy sofa, but you don't miss it when you're there. Mm. It's just, you've just got to do these things and they like give you real purpose. Just collecting water and filtering water, you have to do it. You don't question doing it. Um, yeah, it's like not a chore, is it? It's just no. a, a thing that you do to survive. I had like a really good day just doing these ju doing these jobs that are, that fill your day and you don't necessarily have to do like exercise, but you have been exercised because you've just been doing all of these menial tasks all day. Um, and we, I guess we brought some of that back. Um, moving on from the Appalachian Trail, the, we came up with a plan to start our own business um which we plan to do that because it would be outside it should be with nature um, and we should be able to dictate our own hours and potentially take hopefully we're planning to take the winter off mm. um because not much is going on in gardens at that time um we did that for just over two years and it basically wasn't really ticking those boxes um in many of those ways it was good for learning but in terms of what we actually wanted from life and we, we learned a lot from it but for example we learned that lawn care isn't very environmentally friendly um and it was very difficult to actually take time off because of owning your own business which loads of people do and it again it's quite fun because there's always stuff to do but at some point there's too much to do yeah. and my brain well it didn't cope very well sometimes um so yeah, that that happened. Yeah. But like just just I guess the simplicity of the trail and like being able to walk from A to B and actually get yourself somewhere on foot, you know, be able to look at a map and go, I walk from kind of pretty much Florida to Canada is cool. And <laughs> and cool. just like just knowing that you've you've got there on your own steam, like yeah. carrying everything on your back. Mm. Like simple you know and we you know there's all the different ways of doing it um but we pride ourselves on being like we did it the purest, purest way you know we carried it all we never slap packed and um we didn't know there was another way yeah we didn't know we like, <laughs> so we just <laughs> out to do it and we we're like we can't change now <laughs> we wanted to go we wanted to go from south to north all the way with the backpacks on every meter of the way we didn't realize there was another option and then we and we everybody else was slap packing which is where you like go to a hostel, you leave your bag there, you do a section and you return to the hostel that night. Or well, someone was, takes okay. your bag to the next section for um, you. And for some reason, we just denied ourselves that luxury. <laughs> we we were like, you can't change your mind now. If you change now, you've like changed it. Anyway, we were, we, yeah. Can you do but it to yourself? Anyway, that, I guess when we got back home, that was the things that we missed was like, just like, if your phone just doesn't work or if it doesn't have signal, it's fine because mm. what can you do You're in the woods or... Um, you know, it really was just those simple parts of enjoying. And actually, I think you said it, um, just having purpose, like mm. the hike every, every day, waking up, knowing that your purpose was to 
walk this many miles to reach this point and if you could reach this point that was even better and you'd be satisfied every day because you were like i've done the miles yeah i've got some food i've got water like that's you were happy with just that and that was like awesome and then as human beings obviously we get home and you're like oh like shopping or oh, you know and you get excited by everything else again and you fall back into the old ways but i mean i think that's yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm interested actually because I, I love that you have the awareness there to be able to pinpoint that sense of purpose that being on the trail provides. And I think that's what's so appealing about it for people, you know, certainly these longer trails is it's a, a step away from the ordinary and the mundane into something adventurous and exciting. It's routine. It's, it's, yeah, it's got that sense of purpose and meaning because you have not only a goal but it's a shared goal with the other people you're meeting on the trail and that's something that we just don't really have anymore because we don't have the same societal structures and community and I'm, I'm, I'm just curious because it's it's quite a common phrase did you experience um any of the the commonly coined post-expedition blues or were you just sort of coming back and thrown straight into your running your business um no, we definitely Yeah, did. we definitely We watched did. a video before we went that said uh, the Appalachian Trail ruined, ruined my, my life. life. And we were like, ha, 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 ha. Um, because he talks about being, like, really, you know, that nothing was the same when he got mm. home. And that was, that was exactly how we felt. Like, you couldn't look at anything in the same way. Like, wow. one, I couldn't look at a stick without thinking Very it was a way. snake, <laughs> which oh. is not good. Um, and two, um, yeah, you just kept even now it's like been four years and i think people must be fed up i just can't stop well i'm always just like <laughs> always oh yeah like on the at because it was literally yeah. like the thing you know and if i walk in the woods i'm imagining white blazes on the tree like mm -hmm. I, I always go back to that which is kind of like our, our little inspiration but mm. yeah. we've got like a map upstairs um and when we go to bed we like putting on nature sounds and i just like to imagine myself lying in the tent the <laughs> yeah. oh, that's just what puts me to sleep every night which is, uh, it's brilliant we've got to get a new trip we've got to get out of this house <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I i like to talk about this because i mean i i don't know how many thousands of miles i've done i've not done you know 2000 plus miles in one go but i know that 2019 i walked nearly 6000 miles and wow. you just i, I do a lot that's of so many miles <laughs> Um, oh, really? well that's kind of what happens when you make a career out of it so <laughs> yeah 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 oh my goodness um it, it it is true it's you i like that uh, i don't know who it was or if i was just talking to myself at some point which probably sounds really weird I'm, and i'm not going to edit that out i'm just going to let it happen um that it feels like you go on the trail and you start off as a certain puzzle piece and the trail molds you and shapes you almost like clay and you come back a slightly different shape and then you're trying to fit back into your your previous shape in your life and you just can't mm. because mm. you've you've grown and molded whilst everybody else has just continued in their their normal shape and it is it's it's very hard and that's where i feel the sort of the through hiking backpacking community is a very a sacred space almost because there's people who do understand that and and you guys saying about oh you know we're never going to stop talking about the AT like don't own it like I can say in um, 2014 I was 18 years old and I did Kilimanjaro um, we were shooting a film and I still I'm still singing the Kilimanjaro song like every single day I'm still remembering it's, it's a part of me you know and so yeah, yeah. and the AT is part of you because of what you've gone through individually mm -hmm. and together and um, I think that's something to celebrate and everyone else can just get over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, you have to keep listening. Is you, you keep hearing your grandparents' stories and I mean, <laughs> we're, we're already them. doing that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> start early. <laughs> Do you yeah. find, um, I, think the hard, I think one of the, one of the things is, is people not understanding what, what, like, yeah, like you said, but like Shaky trying to become. explain to people that haven't done it or aren't hikers mm. kind of what you got from it or what, you know, I think people just, one, they can't comprehend the amount of mileage that you've just done. It doesn't matter how far it is, but like whether you've done a hundred mile, you know, um, mm. way or, or 2000, like 6, people thousand. can't kind of comprehend that. And they also don't understand that like fluctuating and that roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, that's really hard because you just say, they just take it as face value and they just take it as the, you know, oh, she's talking about that trail again. Yeah. And you're just like, but you don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. I, I feel you with that, you know, and I think there's sort of two things I've learned because as I say, I've been going off for 
however long doing thousands of miles each year and as I say not in the one go but it's it's taken me here there and everywhere and I've certainly found that when I come back like initially when I would finish a trail because I, I do and or have done and do a lot of solo hiking I would sort of contact people at the end and you know and then gradually it just felt like I remember one time it's just a really small trail it just took two days to do um, called the Gritstone Trail near the Peak District and I got to is it kids grove station which is the end and I, I just touched the plaque and i just stood there and i felt really sad and really hollow and i wanted to pick up the phone to somebody but i don't have anybody in my life who who really gets it like my parents do they did hiking and things and still do a bit but i didn't want to talk to them either so i got to the station and i just sat on the bench and i actually just talked to myself as though i was talking to somebody that that could say what i wanted to hear and it sort of just helped me feel strong enough to receive whatever came my way from somebody else and then the second thing that i found is coming back from these trips or you know traveling or, or anything you do that sort of really builds you up and excites you it's very easy to be caught up in your own story but whilst your story or our story is going on everybody else is living their lives too and theirs is just as important you know maybe they had a, a really cool conversation at work or with a friend or they i don't know found a new place in the woods and i always like to try and emphasize em emphasize um sort of an interest in what's been going on in their life as well and and then sort of just drop in my stuff as and when it feels relevant and it, it almost is a swallowing of what you've gone through and holding it inside of you mm -hmm. but if that's what's so special about you guys doing that together is you know that you can talk about it all day every day and still feel that excitement and that connection and I have mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I mean obviously it brings you together but it helps you dream and move forwards as well so yeah that's that's very cool <laughs> no you're totally right I think you can get lost in it and you can almost have this like view that what you've done is more important than more mm. because that's what's important to us doesn't mean it's important to other people so exactly you're right in that. People, like you get yeah. lost in the excitement mm. and I can I can definitely hold my hands up like yeah definitely get get like that where I'm like uh but my thing is way more exciting <laughs> but then you're like focus that's it focus. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah no uh. yeah. No, it's it's a, it's all, always that learning. Do you isn't ever it? experience um, trail blues? Ah, coming back. Um, I feel like my life is just a permanent trail blue sometimes. <laughs> um it's sunny outside i'm sad i'm not out there yet. yeah no it's it's very tricky because obviously when I mean, we've touched on it I, I do spend a lot of time doing this and it's it's almost I've experienced the sort of trail blues or expedition blues, you know, coming back from something. I mean, probably the most severe was after Kilimanjaro because it was my first thing. I was young. I didn't really have that emotional awareness and I was in a pretty sad environmental situation as well. So it's not like there was anything around me to sort of keep me going. And I sort of didn't really get up or move for three months <laughs> um, and I just kind of stopped eating and yeah it was really not good. But then there was an underlying depression and mental health condition there at the same time anyway. Um, these days I'm called kind of ready for it, but also with the structure of how I run, spend more time in the wild. I mean, it's kind of just like right now we're, we're moving into spring and it's like, okay, sort of the, you know, there's like childhood, um, sling things, what are they called? Um, slingshots. that's it. Slingshots. Exactly. Where they're like pulling back the pressure on the elastic band. Like that's what feels like it's happening. And as soon as yeah. we can go, it's like the season is going to be like, boom, 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 because it is often yeah. I'm on one trail, come back for a couple of days, next trail, come back and sort of safeguarding myself through that. It sounds like the idyllic life, but it's hard work. And mm -hmm. certainly then when it gets to sort of winter season and you, you're tempted to just carry on and be like, oh, I'll go south and just do summer down, down south, you know, in the southern hemisphere. But there has to be a pause. There has to be that breathe. And actually, sure. it's very tempting to run around the world and see everything and do everything and be everything. But actually, there's so much around us at home and you know that's that's certainly mm -hmm. something that lockdown is teaching a lot of people that actually there is value in in being at home and and, and um, appreciating the local patch and I certainly hope that those lockdown learnings can be carried forward in the future when we are back to the freedoms of traveling and exploring that we can still come home breathe in deeply and feel equally as, as satisf satisfied and, and content yeah I hope so yeah I've said, like in terms of having the the chill time there's been it seems to be um for the last i don't know since we've been traveling it's like go traveling stop traveling earn yeah. some money also have a rest yeah. and just put your feet on the ground enjoy your family enjoy your friends because you don't 
the traveling is, is really fun and it's got its own excitement, it's got its own exhaustion, but it also doesn't, you don't have, you have different friendships, but you don't have your old friendships and you don't have your family. And, yeah. and also it's, I've, yeah, it's, it's good to have both. I don't feel like you could do either forever. Yeah. No, I think well, got... maybe you can do one actually, because lots of people do do one. Um, but you definitely can't do the traveling or it feels nice to stop. Yeah, I kind yeah. of think that we got to like six months of traveling around South and Central. I don't, I mean, other people might be different, but we started, you know, you get you kind of, right, you right. would stop seeing the views like you, yeah. like you've seen them for the first time. Like yeah. it, you, it not, doesn't lose the magic. It's still just beautiful, but you, because you're quite tired and because you've been doing it a long time, you stop appreciating them in the same way. And I don't, they don't deserve that. They deserve yeah. you to be like there, you know? So I think, yeah, you need to rest and recuperate and kind of, restore yourself a little Digest bit so it. you can go back yeah. and so actually this lockdown's great because when we can go and go further afield hopefully we can actually take a you know we'll be really happy and yeah. it will mean more because you can we're so free again yeah exactly yes. and it's it's funny isn't it because we are such an adaptive species and we're so able to do so much but it as soon as there's any kind of like routine even if it's an adventurous routine it becomes normal and it loses that sprinkle of magic so um but actually talking of of you know past chapters let's have a chat about future chapters now so you guys throughout 2020 certainly since the summer of 2020 have been rather busy working on a van now I know that the whole van life hashtag van life has uh, certainly kicked off worldwide and I can definitely see the appeal, but I'm interested as to why you guys have decided to get yourself um, a long wheeled van um, or long base van and uh, what, what hopefully it's going to steer you into the future. Yeah. Uh, so I guess a little bit of background is we tried to, we, we tried to get a mortgage. Um, we tried all of the normal things. <laughs> we, uh, we tried normal. to get a mortgage, but we basically didn't qualify. It was very stressful. Mm. And because, because we're freelance and because we had our own business, and it was just a little bit too mm. young. And, and it just became yeah. too stressful. And the plan was, we didn't necessarily really want a mortgage because we quite like the free life, but it's the sensible thing to do. And that fell through. And then we got rid of the business. And then we were like, well, we can, there's no way we can even get a mortgage now. Uh, let's get a, we originally just wanted to, hike for the summer and then like see what ha hike for the summer see what inspiration takes us while we're on our journey and then start again lockdown happened so we're like okay well we can't hike anymore uh, let's do something else that would make sense and be and all really our friends good. were like you should just build one like you guys yeah. could definitely do it and we're like nah nah, 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 nah nah and then suddenly we're like actually it could work out being you know financially you know more more feasible to actually build our own um then buy one and it turns out Tom's a uh, natural carpenter, so it's all Look good. Look at that. Good <laughs> career from it. Um, so yeah, we spent, we originally thought it was going to take um, sort of two to three months because of what other people are doing. But we had also quite, yeah, right. I guess, quite high expectations. <laughs> and also we had the luxury of um, like time, basically. Mm. So we actually spent more like six months pretty much permanently doing it. Uh, Max was helping, but also freelancing on the side, um, and we used basically our savings and what we sold the business for um, to help us get into that. Um, so yeah, it's been been really good. We we started it in June and pretty much finished it at Christmas, July. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, but it was it was a really awesome learning curve and quite overwhelming at the beginning. Um, so much to learn, but really fun, like so involving and practical um you got that like functional fitness of just being on your feet all day long and <laughs> feeling tired and your muscles aching because you've been holding like a screwdriver all day not because you've been sitting at a desk and, mm. yeah i definitely had like jealousy when i had to like sit on my laptop like looking out the window mm. like oh Tom. and then obviously as the weather changed i was thinking oh no i've got to be inside i'm sorry <laughs> yeah so we did it all we just did it on our driveway which has no we don't have a garage we don't have any cover so um, that makes life a little bit harder. So we use the van as much as possible as the workshop as well as building in it, which does get quite small. Um, also, we just embraced the suck, which is actually a through hike. A through hike says that. Yep. Um, and just you go work because it's quite fun and you're building your own house. There's no. It might be freezing, and it, the only reason you can't do it in the rain is because the tools are electric. Um, <laughs> 
and yeah so it's really cool just to watch your like little house come together and to know that well we lived in a tent so i guess that's another thing from the appellation trial is that now we've done it everything goes back to well we've done that so we can do anything yeah, like right. which is a really nice thing to have because we can live in a in a i mean it's like spacious compared to the tent so um i, I guess the reason to have the van is for the freedom i guess financially it's not obviously going to be completely free there's quite a lot of financial ties that come with owning a van and i guess security worries um like you could crash it or you could get nicked but you can do certain things against these and at some point you've just got to commit to it mm. um so i guess in terms of the lifestyle we're trying to go for is we, we know that living on a trail is really hard and setting up a new life every time which we've done i think like three times like finding a place to stay looking for a job is probably the worst part of traveling is just having to like, like, yeah yeah it's 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 quite tough for for a sort of six weeks until mm. we're being settled again so we're um, hoping that this enables us to do it all well yeah <laughs> it's the solution to all of our problems everything's no, it's going to come with its own uh, its own issues and we've said from the start that you know we'll try it out and if we don't like it you can mm. we can sell it like so we never go into anything thinking that it's it's you know has to be permanent um we always just think oh well we'll give it a go at least we won't regret that we didn't yeah, you know because exactly. ever since we, we started traveling people just kept saying i wish i had done it i wish i'd done mm. this i wish i'd done this and i think what we've learned is if you want something you can make it happen yeah. and then if you don't like it you can change it like the worst thing you can do is, is just we can just go and get different jobs and rent a house like that's literally the worst thing that can happen so yeah that's it quite us. interesting yeah <laughs> that's uh it's, it's very powerful actually i you don't hear too many people talk like that anymore i don't feel um i think it, was, it, it sorry go on oh there was a couple of other things people would say oh yeah it's good to do it while you're young yes. get it out of your system oh. and we're like is this what you're supposed to do because i don't want to do the other stuff i just want to <laughs> maybe not in the same way but yeah and also like way. when we got back it's like oh you, you've got it out of your system now you're gonna mm. settle down oh god i hate that term I settle down. That like, yeah. it, it feels, <laughs> settle down feels like i mean to me yeah i get other people like they use it in a different way and it means something to them but for mm. me settle down feels like you're compromising or you're settling yeah. for the thing that you could you know you're you, yeah it just seems the opposite to life and i think opposite to life well it does yeah. like it's opposite to like living like where i i'm very short like we're very here for a very short time yeah so if we can make it make the most of it without having to settle down that'll be i mean maybe one day we will we may mm. hate living in the van and be like actually we just want a house <laughs> and a nine to five and that's fine that's, but at least we try that's it. always the fallback is what's the worst that can happen is that we go back to working nine to five and getting a house which if that's the worst thing that's brilliant because yeah that, it's great that's not that bad i mean no, it's, 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 it's really good it's just not not for us it's not our first priority but um, i guess do you find that when you or, do you find people ask you that like when are you gonna like stop hiking and settle down <laughs> like well, when know. are you when are you gonna get a proper job <laughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's like well i have a full-time business so uh what else do we need to do <laughs> yeah it's um i just really like that you guys have you've looked at the whole rounded approach of this and, and and what i was saying earlier is the fact that you're okay to just try something out and if it doesn't work it doesn't work but you gave it a try and you're not crippled by the fear of things going wrong or of it not working out um you know yeah maybe you have concerns and worries or you have had concerns and worries but you're giving it a go anyway and i it clearly testifies to you guys being a good team and being able to sort of bounce ideas off and and show up to things together um yeah i think it's it's very admirable and and very exciting um so i look forward to following along and seeing where you guys end up with all this <laughs> <Don't we? laughs> i think that's the whole idea of it takes a journey is that we're like <laughs> where is it gonna see take what us? happens max has actually had a new approach which is um i'm always like we need to from from like uni like you've got to have a business plan you've got to have a plan you've got to make a plan you've got to try and stick to the plan plan it just plan it and this time, Max is like, listen, so far our plans in terms of COVID uh, just changes everything. COVID and like the So Green, the lawn care business, not the best plan, it turns out. And Max is like, listen, just roll with the punches, man. Just take it easy. 
don't plan it all. I mean, have a bit of a plan, but you don't have to have it really planned. It's also like, it's like well, I don't know how to deal with this. I need, <laughs> I need a plan. I need to know what I'm doing tomorrow. Like, I think... what do you mean no plan? I'm like, okay. Hmm, how do I plan for no plan? <laughs> <laughs> I think tomorrow's fine, but like I think like we don't we don't know what it's like to live in the van, so we might get in and hate it. So you can't making all these plans for like living in a van is great, but and yeah, as you say, COVID is. But then yeah, COVID COVID's kind of shown 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 us that you've got you've got to be flexible, otherwise your literally your life is over because yeah. all your plans and dreams have been knocked out of the park, and if you can't yeah. change it, then. You'll be miserable. <laughs> exactly. The first thing that goes is the plan, hey. <laughs> See yeah. Plan. Yeah. That's we'll it. Make a new plan. We'll make a new plan. Plan two. <laughs> plan B. <laughs> yeah. So you guys, I mean, we've talked about very briefly. Um, it takes a journey. So you're running this online space. You're sharing your story through, you know, socials through really very good blogs. I, I I love the way you guys articulate things and your visuals as well there. Um, and I would just like to very briefly touch on the two charities that you you guys are both engaged with so that's reach um and mind yes um reach is an awesome charity for uh, upper limb difference um and we now actually do um we like working part-time doing their uh, newsletter which is really awesome um I, it's it's yeah, it just shows shows you that actually when you're doing something that you're really passionate about, like the time just, you know, flies out the window. And we've really enjoyed doing that. And I, I really enjoyed speaking to kind of other other reach parents and members and things and, and get involved. So, um, yeah, it's just trying to help help children. It's a children's charity. So it's trying to help children, you know, grow up with representation and with help, uh, physical or mental help that they need just to support and to create a community, community for them to have people around them and know that being different isn't isn't is okay basically so yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. it's been it, there's been a good experience mm -hmm. and even a bit of a sidetrack on that note is that um when we closed down our business we weren't exactly sure what we were going to do but when you have the time to be open to opportunities then well you can do these things so then out of the blue come, yeah. reach turned up and it's really it it fits in with your value our values quite well Whereas yeah weird, before, weirdly wasn't it it's was just like mm. they, they suddenly advertised for they needed a copywriter and, and a designer for their newsletter which is oh. like a weird combination to one and we were like we could do that could do. <laughs> um you know so um that it just seemed too perfect and i think like you said it, it when uh, some doors close other doors open but you've got to be open to see those opportunities so, exactly yeah. yeah and trust in the yeah, timing yeah and just going back to to reach a bit more from you joined it last year and it it basically opened your eyes a bit more too yes yeah well i hadn't worn short sleeves for like probably since i was like really small so i've been really shy so since kind of becoming a member again i guess i saw the importance of it um and i, mm. and I started wearing short sleeves because i started to think actually if i can be an advocate for for, for limb difference and people can see me then i'm helping children that are born today, which every day there's children being born with indifference, which I didn't realise, um, that hopefully they grow up seeing other people and seeing people on TV and seeing, yeah. you know, and, and people can see me and think, oh, okay, she's just got a different arm, like that's it. And hopefully that will change their point of view. So it gave me like a purpose and a reason. So then when we were able to join and, and work for each, it was it just felt really, felt perfect really. So yeah, yeah that's that was really it's, nice. It's nice, it's nice to see all the kids and to, be a bit more of a part of it you get sent these like cute little photos of these little kids and and we don't have any kids and you, you have the discussion but then you see them and you're like oh these guys are so cute <laughs> and we'll put everybody on the front cover <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to, 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 yeah, to get involved mm -hmm. yeah. um and my well from mind uh, or involvement with mind is um to raise money for the cause um due to well i feel like everybody suffers from some mental health from time to time some more than others um but between me and max we're, we're fairly good most of the time um and our families also have things going on let's say um so yeah it's, it's a good cause and particularly during lockdown you hear of all sorts of stories 
um, of sort of mental mm -hmm. health due to isolation and 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 you realize again I guess you realize how many people potentially I don't know if have or had or have affected by maybe yeah but I also found because of going on longer walks with individuals just one-on-one -on -one, mm. no we've talked about things I would have I don't think we've ever talked about before, but I feel like it's become a lot more open recently, but equally that might be because of the bubble that we've created or are in, but yeah. I don't think so. I think everybody's, it feels like it's on the radio, people are talking about on TV. Uh, you've been talking about it for, for a long while. So, and it's, it's a good thing to not get hung up on necessarily, but to be open to again. Mm. Um, and it's a, yeah, raising money for any charity is good. And these are the ones that, are closest to our hearts yeah no i think it's 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 so great that you guys do that and you're you're contributing to that bigger picture as well as obviously just sharing sharing your story which is powerful enough and um i think you're right tom sort of talking about mental health and how sort of the profile of it is, is it is very slowly becoming everyday conversation and sometimes that's empowering sometimes not but i think that's down to the individual but uh, listen, we have touched on so much in this conversation and I am, um, I mean, I've been just enjoying it thoroughly. Uh, but I think to sort of round this up, I'd like to just ask you um, each individually and then together what your hopes are for the future. Oh, it's a big one, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Diving in deep. Um, What's your five year plan? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> We decided no plans. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you know what? I really don't know. And like that's, I think just because we don't know. I've already <laughs> planned plan. it. Um, I think um, just finding something. I think right now we feel like we are really on. Everything is changing all the time, and and we've got all of our doors open to yeah. opportunities. That's what kind of it feels like, and I'm really excited. Um, because I think that we won't really know where we're going until, well, COVID, you know, and we can kind of go and we want to do our walk for good. We, we do really still want to do our national trails around the UK. That would be, I think that's, that's for the immediate future. That's probably our focus. Um, and just find a, strike a balance between being able to do lots of hiking that we enjoy and to be able to do that. I think, I think that's, I think. That's so like, I guess in, in part of it is like liver live a bit simpler and live a bit slower very mm. difficult to actually find that balance um I, we've been watching a lot of ben fogel's new lives in the wild and we've been yeah we're feeling really inspired by some of those kind of things and um, just getting on track with our like we're just getting back to cooking and trying it we're, we're always just trying to well we're always overthinking everything but we're always just trying to like find a balance with like with food and health and like exercise you know you exercise too much and then you're suddenly like oh i've done it i've overdone it and just trying to find that middle ground constantly and which, earning money and yeah and having to earn money but not yeah. having to work yourself into the ground um and, and actually saving some time back for, for for just you know to be able to read a book and, and to actually also be able to give yourself that time because it's hard to actually stop yeah. sometimes um and just just trying to find that like balance where you're like happy and healthy and you feel it's a tricky balance yeah I guess, it is whilst I... you're also trying to explore and see everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm being environmentally friendly <laughs> oh, um, yeah. i guess i would hope that um this is really idealistic i guess hopefully we'll find a nice cabin in the woods somewhere that isn't really far away from a community so you're part of a community we can grow some veg and we can oh, earn, chickens. we can earn some <laughs> money through something that we enjoy that we don't need a lot um but i don't know exactly what i yeah. don't know it, simple it's life the, yeah. yeah something like that but then but then there's always a bit of the grass is always greener and there's always a bit of uh trying to be calm and enjoy what you've got because there's always there's always more stuff which is annoying in some ways um yeah just trying to get away from that like striving for constantly striving i think we all need something to look forward to but yeah trying to actually not just always be looking ahead yeah yeah i think sort of what i'm taking away from that is just to stay in the present and make the most of it hopefully <laughs> see what happens <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> well that's oh, actually, i guess uh, 
uh, yeah, it would be it would be nice to walk the trails and then somewhere have a have a rest. Um, potentially, we're talking like potentially write a book, see how the year goes, see how inspired you're feeling, um, and me. But Max is obvious. I'm so dyslexic that the book would be gobbledygook. <laughs> Uh, so Max is going to have to do the legwork on that. Otherwise, um... we'd love to have a hike with you. Oh yeah, oh, that'd be I think that would be so cool. I was thinking about that at, like ten minutes ago. I was like, we're going for a walk yeah, yeah. at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be great. Uh, there's yeah. also um, Impala is organising a mass start for Joggle. Oh, have cool. you heard of this? I haven't actually. It's one of the to Land's End. It's yeah. an open invite. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure. So anybody who wants yeah. to take part, but he's he's um, he's mass he's trying to mass start joggle, um, so try and create a bit of a American um, bubble culture, American yeah. bubble. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that sounds cool. Sharing with the hiking community. <laughs> yeah, have to have, have to look that up after we finish. Actually, all right then, guys. So to round this up, um, I have ten quick fire questions for you. So um, your answers can be. Um, a little bit more padded out if you want to but uh if you're ready we'll kick this thing off okay. all right we've heard, we've heard your questions <laughs> that's it you know what's coming yeah, uh, yeah i can't quite I remember, remember them <laughs> <laughs> okay the first question is what was the last book you read and loved spoon fed by, by tim specter mm, that was good that was a great book yeah um, what's yeah, that about oh. it's like uh it's busting, busting the myths that we think Aww. about food and it's it it basically just says that every food is very personal for everyone yeah. which is yeah. a really nice but it's also, a very clean way of looking at we, it all we've been mm. given uh, potentially false information due to um, bad science i guess and maybe the food, um, industry, the food industry and yeah. corruption. Yeah. Well, it was <laughs> definitely sure. a, a podcast for another day, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd go it's with... quite refreshing. It's a refreshing read because you just think, okay, it all just goes back to nature. Yeah. And it cool. all just comes back to being natural. And, and, that sounds yeah. cool. Awesome. So, again, don't overthink it. And I said, yeah. we, we read that together. Yeah. Okay. Well, I read it out, you read it I read it out loud. <laughs> audible. <laughs> good. Pretty, um, pretty audible. Uh, and also the salt path we enjoyed uh, recently. Ah, it's a good book. Uh, yeah, we listened to that driving down to Italy, and uh, yeah, very enjoyable. Oh, nice. Yeah, mm, that's a good one. Are you morning or evening people? I'm going to be a morning person. Yeah, probably morning. Sometimes both, both way morning. too morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Early morning. By the evening, we're like, mm. yeah. And motivation disappears. <laughs> yeah, I can uh, relate to that. <laughs> um, okay. Next question. Question three. If you were reincarnated as an ice cream flavor, what flavor would you be? I thought about this. What are you? I, I, I'm vanilla because it might be boring, but you know, you know, you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you have thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely not thought about that. I just went, I just thought of chocolate because it's my favourite. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I that's think, good. yeah, probably chocolate because it's always tasty. Wait, that's not me. Oh, that's weird. No, I don't know. <laughs> chocolate. I think the trick with this question is to not overthink it. <laughs> I just suddenly realised you said reincarnate. I was like, wait, what does he mean? Oh, no, that's weird. Um, anyway, chocolate's tasty. <laughs> chocolate is good chocolate is good okay question four what did you want to be when you were growing up i, I wanted to be a pilot but um i wasn't clever enough <laughs> fair enough <laughs> I, I did some work experience in the raf as like an engineer and i was like this is great but it's not being a pilot <laughs> <laughs> and Max? um i do I don't know. I remember wanting to be a, to have like a, I went to Centre Parks. So basically I wanted my own Centre Parks called Maxine's. And, um, <laughs> and I was going to have like uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory style, like lickable wallpaper. That's the oh, only thing. Wow. <laughs> that Pretty random. So oh, I had all the things. Oh yeah, because I was too young to go in the rapids and stuff. So I had all the things that I was allowed to, to go in. <laughs> yeah, that's really random, but yeah. Oh, I, I like that. That's uh, that. niche. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, next question. What is your most unusual talent for each of you? 
No, I remember thinking. I remember thinking about the question. I obviously, never came up with an answer. Spencer, your de definition of talent. I we really liked. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. Um, you have to give us a bit more than that. Right. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Moss, you had uh, on your podcast. Oh, I Stephen Moss. Him. Yeah. Stephen, yeah. we really loved his answer because that was great. Like saying that he's oh. not, not listening to his wife's. <laughs> like really good memory for. Um, yeah, but what is? Uh, no. I can lick my nose. I think that's qualified. Oh yeah. Can we, are we are we allowed to see that today? Look at that. <laughs> I think I, I figured out I could do that on my twenty first birthday. So I was like, winning. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. I really don't know. It's that secret. Yeah, I haven't figured well, it out okay. yet. That's maybe, probably maybe if you find something, we'll pop it in the show notes for the listeners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I, yeah. Fair enough. Just being good. awesome. Yeah, wow. there you go. We'll take that. <laughs> um, okay, question six. Who has inspired you most in your life? That's a good one. Um, I have to say him. It's really hard to pick one person. Yeah. I have but... to say Tom because he has always been super motivated. I've never met anyone that's so motivated. And like, like he did an Ironman like a few years ago and literally no at the end he was still smiling like he you were like well, go on, not long to go and he's like yeah max is still... my most inspiring person <laughs> 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 no i feel like uh oh no it's too hard um everybody everybody's got at the okay recently this does not qualify for everything uh and middleton because um he's just got this dogged positivity where he's so I, I feel like he's so determined to be ultimately positive that he doesn't let negativity get in his way which really hard which is hard, <laughs> yeah really hard to do but he somehow seems to pull it off and I'm like if I can take a bit of that that'll be really good yeah yeah oh yeah it's, it's good it's good it is amazing to have people around us who model that positive attitude and just keep going and it really it almost throws a line out to us to to keep us going as well Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what do you think will matter to you most in your life when you are 80 years old? <laughs> I think that we just, that we, if we want, that we wanted to do something and we set out to do it. Like, I think that for me is really important to not have regrets. Yeah. And I think I don't want to look back and think, I wish I had done that. I, I want to like be able to look back and go, cool, we tried it all and whether, whether if it failed. Which of the 100 things that we tried did we... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, yeah. Yeah, I no agree. Regrets. Yeah, awesome. No, that's really good. Okay, two simpler ones to come. So the first question, we'll do them together actually. What's your favourite food? And the second question, what's your favourite outdoor space? Favourite food? Oh. Mm, pick one. It'd probably just be pizza. Yeah. Nice. Good old pizza, like a great pizza. I could eat that probably six days. <laughs> still would love it. Um, I, I put, we make like a really great Mexican bowl, what we call a Mexican mm. bowl, with just like oh. just like fries and beans and like right. guacamole and sweet potatoes, and it's just it's always great. And it's like super colourful, very filling. Oh, Feels yeah. like you've got all of the nutrition that you'd ever need ever yeah, and it's so heavy on carbs it's unbelievable yes. <laughs> well winning <laughs> <laughs> and, and open space Ooh, that's a hard one. i've got a local open space which i've really enjoyed walking during lockdown um is there we live near some sheep fields and there's a it's, a it's like a valley with the sheep fields at the bottom and it goes up into woodland at the top and it's just beautiful it's really green the sheep are pretty the woodland's <laughs> awesome the trail you can like see it lead off and every time i'm there you never just walk through it like oh you know you always know i always notice it it's great it's yeah. like, this is a beautiful place to be and it's five minutes away wow yeah. yeah yeah um i'm gonna probably at the moment anyway because i don't like i'm like i'm always moving and always there'll be another favorite space but right now probably gonna follow in stephen moss's uh uh, they say the loop which is yeah. what, we oh, call, yeah. what we call a loop near us the loop. that is He's just great because it's ever changing and you get a bit of everything a bit of woods a bit of countryside so yeah yeah the loop. The loop. it's a good yeah. loop well it's, it's other people call them the loop. it's the loop <laughs> yeah the loop, or... the loop. uh yeah, yeah for, for me the loop is 
well we have two we have the bobby loop bobby is my little dog and we'll take him on the little walk and then we have the morning walk loop which i do each morning so (laughs) yeah but it's definitely a thing (laughs) yeah it comes back to that importance and and gratitude for the local spaces doesn't it so no i love that um okay last question do you guys have any catchphrases or mantras that you live your life by yes it's hard to remember them all (laughs) <laughs> because there's like so many that fit every situation right sure uh, um there's currently i'm always going on no not going on um be the change you want to see that's a mm. that's one that's strong at the moment love that one yeah uh enjoy the suck that's one from um i heard it from a true hike on youtube and basically yeah. it means see the silver lining in the horrible situations yeah because it'll be over at some point and yeah. well you may as well not hate it because you may as well try and enjoy it yeah sure <laughs> i think uh make it happen i think that's like mm. a really big thing that we've always just we've just dem- like demonstrated to ourselves that if yeah. we want something we'll make it happen somehow it if happen. you want it bad enough yeah but also um on the at was uh don't make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings mm-hmm. so I think there wasn't there was it wasn't an option to quit it, but I think if you I think in life you, yeah you're always going to come out of that dip aren't you so you've yeah. got you can't change, make life changing decisions based yeah. at that low period you've got to wait to get over it before you go okay was it really that bad or was I just having a moment <laughs> yeah. so yeah, yeah. Uh, I just say yes which I feel was a bit more of a younger me's phrase but it's still a good one because you mm. can't say yes to everything but you really should try to if you can because the more i feel like the more experiences you can do even if they're random ones the or if they don't work the better or if they don't yeah. work um, oh, there's one more that i just just disappeared out of the side yeah, of the all, of all of them yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think there's some uh really good things in there actually and um some good good steering forces that will keep you on track with with your values so just to to finish this thing off then i'd love if you guys could sort of leave the listeners with any sort of parting advice in in any of the fields that we've touched on i mean we've talked you know about travel about limb differences about mental health about building a van is there any sort of concluding thoughts you'd like to leave listeners with that could perhaps empower them um, regardless of the situation that they find themselves in Definitely get outside and spend more time in the wild. That is, that is, that is so true. Um, even if it's, I guess, even if it's five minutes, more like, even if it's, I feel like a really good amount of time minimum is like half an hour because then you can get out. And at the beginning, you're still like a bit tense from whatever it is that you might have been doing. Or you're still like, you're still in that moment thinking about those things and then get a bit of a walk on and start trying to like, in the moment and like just see the things that are around you and not worry about those things Mm. because they'll be back don't worry (laughs) yeah um i think it's just that um everything seems scarier uh, like you said before like everything's scarier in your head um and we are we are just normal people we overthink everything we aren't the bravest or like the boldest and we've done so much just because we like taking the plunge and you realize actually it's not as scary when you do it and I think I think some people are too scared to change to make a change and to actually go for the thing they really want yeah I think the scariest thing would be to look back and you wish you had done it yeah so I think if, if there's anything that people want to do like you know everyone always comes out with excuses excuses reasons you know like oh no I've, I've got a house I've got this but you can sell a house you can you can make a change and I think yeah. there's no age limit on that um, people are doing things all the time so I think it's just if you want something just go for it and try it and and you and you don't need to be the richest person you don't need to be the fittest person you can just if you want mm. to start walking and you've never walked just just go walk to just you know five minutes down the, the road and garden. walk back again and like yeah it doesn't need to be thousands of miles or anything so just yeah. just give it a go and... I've got all, something that we always try to do more nowadays is listen to our gut instinct um which is sometimes easy to ignore but you you know best what is best for you and you've got to sometimes be still and a bit more quiet to actually Mm. listen to that and but then you've actually got to do as max says and actually potentially take that leap of faith to follow what your gut 
might do if that's sort of hmm. change your career or start a new hobby or I don't know. Yeah. You want to like breathe in, take a deep breath, try and plan it out as best you can and then run into it. And even if that like, you must know or like owning a business is just it's chaos the whole time, but you somehow pull pull everything together and it looks semi professional, but you're not really sure how. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Oh, yeah. by the way, I was looking really professional. That's not what I meant. Oh, all good, all good. No, don't worry. I am thoroughly winging it. So <laughs> um, I'm very think, open to saying we that. All, I think that's the thing, though. I exactly. Think we all think we, yeah. Like, every single person, even every experts person. and things don't know everything. Yeah. That's, that, we're all scared by that, um, that fear that, like, we all suffer from... What, what's it called? Imposter, uh, imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah and and you realize that everyone is winging it so what's the worst that can happen exactly. <laughs> just join in yeah that's it. That's join it. in and listen to that gut <laughs> join in show up and tune in as well yeah. nice yes yeah listen guys this has been an absolute pleasure i've loved diving into all of the topics with you and i want to thank you for your honesty and your generosity in showing up in in sharing your lives with me and the listeners um i have no doubt that everyone who listens to this is going to be buzzing in their seat like I am right now, just <laughs> ready to go out into the big wide world. I mean, yes, we have lockdown right now, so I just need to take a deep breath. But um, <laughs> you are absolutely inspiring in everything that you're doing. And I want to wish you all the best as uh, we progress with the year. And as I said earlier, I look forward to following your adventures and seeing where you end up. So thank you for your time today. And uh, thank you. have you back on the podcast in the future to hear what you've been up to. Yeah, yeah sure. thank really. you so much, Abby. Yes, yeah, thank you, Abby. Really enjoying the podcast as well. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Thanks we'll take care and uh, speak soon. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Speak soon. Bye, right. Abby. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I have to say, I was on a massive high after recording this chat with Max and Tom. They really opened my eyes to the possibilities that surround me if I refuse to stand in fear and that being surrounded by empowering relationships is one of the best way to get grounded and present within oneself. If you'd like to follow Max and Tom on their journey, head to the show notes for their social links and website address. Of course, we all take different things away from each podcast that we listen to, but if you too found this episode inspiring and energizing, please do share it with someone who you know might also enjoy listening. Leave us a review wherever you're tuning in and do head over to our Patreon page to access exclusive episodes, live sessions, behind the scenes content, and perhaps the most empowering online community space you'll ever access. That's www.patreon.com forward slash spend more time in the wild. Thanks for listening, folks. And until next time, stay wild.